successfully in a game. Both teams make changes on the go. Loose in the corner, and Murphy is there to take it for the East. Stan Terlecki, Stan, the man of the Pittsburgh spirit. He's had a checkered season this year. Furphy's on a run, on a lead, off his foot. Mike Mahoney puts it off the glass. Back out to the point. Stankovic looks to wind it up with his left foot. Crow of San Diego. Furphy wins it, but he pushed, and a foul is called. Interesting to me already, Shep, that defenders have taken up good positions for the crosses off the boards. In an all-star game, you might think there could be some misunderstandings that might develop on defense. Well, that's pretty well understood at this stage of the season, Seamus. It's a good point. Uh, it's very difficult to take people on tight quarters, and the way to do that is to use the walls, use the corners to your advantage. Defenders have done very, very well. Weist having some problem clearing the zone. Maybe we will see the game of skill played without too many balls flying out. Stomankovic. Escovy couldn't get to it as Dudek got the foot in to break it up. 11 minutes remaining, period one. We are scoreless. The MISL All-Star Game live on ESPN. And Ilieski comes out challenging with Julie V. Empty net put aside. Saved by Stankovic of Baltimore. Pro to Dudek of Las Vegas. Helmet moves in. He's got a blistering left foot. It hits the crease in the boards. Stankovic and Ilieski out of his area to Kitson. Ball kicks into Baltimore. A little misunderstanding there with his mate. West changes their defensive pairing. That's Julie V on the ball. For Jungle, the starting line back on for the West. Christensen, save in front against Stankovic. Loose in the corner, Christensen fighting. So is Kitson, Paul wins the ball. Here comes the East in a scoreless first period. Kitson with runners to either side, down the middle, looks to pull the trigger there, Stankovic. Stamenkovic, Kitson goal! The Baltimore connection gets the East on the board at the 4.54 mark. Well, Chef, Ralph Black uh, caught a little bit of ball watching there. I thought that we'll take a look at the replay and see Ralph Black's position uh, as a defender here. Let's take a look and see if we can pick it up because he eventually does get caught uh, somewhat watching the ball instead of his man. Well, he is at the end of the play, and here's Stomankovic, so adept at passing the ball. Ralph Black is caught watching Paul Kitson. Watch again as Stomankovic takes it with that lethal left foot. An excellent pass. No chance at all for Mike Mahoney. He's waiting at the near post, and that's a goal, and we see Paul Kitson with the first dance of the night. And another all-star assist for Stan Stamankovic. That gives him six on his career. He had four last year. He was the MVP of that game and was also the MVP back in 1983 when he had three goals. So all-star day is as Stanley stated, put it the opposing keeper. Rent a lead now for Christensen off the glass, and there is Ilieski. So Stamankovic assisting Kitson at 454. The East takes a one-nothing advantage. Guy Heskovy on the ball to the Cleveland Force. Stamankovic, Black watching him. And the Magician has it back. That ball is glued to his foot. Not that time, though. A little push, and the foul is against Tattoo. The East has the free kick. Tattoo's nickname, the Amazing Armadillo. <laughs> if you were to literally translate it from the Portuguese, the colloquial. That must be a question for future Trivial Pursuit games. In Brazil, maybe. Maybe, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> then again, maybe not. one nothing. the East has the lead, along with Seamus Mallon and Shep Messing, I'm Bob Lee, live from the Richfield Coliseum. Bruce Savage starts up the sides. Stan Terlecki fends off Batata, starts on his way, given trouble by Runtved. He's got Franz Matthew on the left. Matthew from Chicago moves in. And the rebound out to the west, and they start the counter-attack, trailing by the goal. Two. And a whistle. East has it back. Terlecki. Two on two for Escovy in the corner. Kai. Mahoney had it with no problems. One new experimental rule this year in the MISL on the sixth foul against either team in a period. A two-minute penalty is assessed. Tattoo slips it inside. Back to Tattoo. Loose in the area. Shot is blocked. Shot taken by Mikowski. McCallis sends it back in. Tattoo. Ilieski. 
Still fighting is Rasmussen. And Rasmussen. The Wichita Wings. Gene Wilrich of San Diego for the West. With tattoo on the box deflected over the board. Eight minutes exactly remaining in the first period. The East on the goal by Kitson has a 1-0 lead. We'll be back to Richfield, Ohio after this word. Strength. Pride. Tradition. For centuries, the Clydesdales have been known as a special breed. Today, the Clydesdales symbolize Budweiser's dedication to quality, superior ingredients, exclusive beechwood aging, and a distinctively clean, crisp taste only Budweiser can offer. Quality taste, because this Bud's for you. Exactly eight minutes to play in the first half, live on ESPN. The corner kick, jungle through the box, looking for McCallis, controlled by the West, the MISL All-Star Game. And Paul Kitchen has gone the East Town on top. Greg Mikowski now. Rasmussen watched by Savage. Lays it off to Gene Wilrich. To Rasmussen, who's the distributor at the top of the penalty arc. Hands up, Bruce. Jungle turns it and has it deflected out for yet another corner kick now for the West. That's the play that the West team wants to set up. They want to get Steve Jungle post, posted down low, turning and shooting at the goal. 7.35 of this first period. We'll step aside once again. The East still leads it 1-0. Right. This is Joe Tate, soccer fans, with All-Stars Kai Hoskovy and Craig Allen. There's one place a soccer player wants to be on February 24th, the Coliseum. The 1985 MISL All-Star Game featured the best soccer players in the world. This prestigious event is commemorated in a 28-inch by 25-inch collectible print, which features each of the original 1985 All-Stars and their autographs. This, the first edition, is available for only $5 plus $1.50 postage and handling. Mail your check or money order for $6.50 to All-Star Print, Box 337, Cleveland, Ohio, 44026. As we said, Tony Bellinger has played in every All-Star game. Huskovy in his fifth. Rebound just wide as we get back to the live action. Off the corner kick. And here comes the East. Ricky Davis of the St. Louis Steamers. And ball was controlled by Segoda. Boy, Greg Makowski with a dreadful miss at the far end. It looked easier to score than to miss down there. And Greg uh, not really playing that well the last few games in the MISL. He's back on it. V slices it out, nobody in the corner though, and so Davis sends it up the boards to Stamankovic, who has the assist on the only goal so far. Stankovic, Mike Stankovic of Baltimore, stands teammate, walks it in on helmet Dudek of the Las Vegas Americans. Stamankovic with Kitchen in front, they've got that Baltimore line playing together, and for good reason. At this stage, the players are really into the game. The pregame chitters are gone, they're starting to touch each other, making some fouls, getting in there defensively. The game is opening up. Jungle back to V with a runner on the right side. It's Savage. He's given trouble in the corner. Six and a half minutes first period as the West will regroup all the way back now to Mike Mahoney, the LA Lasers goalie, very durable keeper. Sagoda to Jungle, flicks it ahead, and there's Hescovy of Cleveland to control it. And start out of the Eastern zone. Dudek wins it well. Jungle waits on it. He's got Dudek to his left, a runner on the right side. Christensen has it put away. Jungle's on it, past Domankovic. Julie V can't get it, won by Hescovy. Here comes the East, leading by a goal. Hescovy at the Cleveland course. Domankovic behind him, did not anticipate that pass right to Julie V. Well, I don't think Stamankovic makes too many overlapping runs after he's got that <laughs> far upfield. Well, that's a lack of communication we talked about earlier. Stamankovic is not the man to make an overlapping run. Uh, Kai Hoskovy uh, might have been a good play for a different player. Here comes Stan Terlecki working in on Kevin Crow. Crow puts it to the corner. Kitson plays the middle. With Bellinger up as well. Goosens, that one is deflected. Terlecki chasing, but there's Dudek. Christensen along the boards, and a pushing foul against the East. That is their third foul of the second period. Stan Terlecki was suspended for a while this year by Pittsburgh. Brought back to Pittsburgh this year and stepped up to the mics at the press conference and said, here comes trouble. A couple of weeks later, he was in the doghouse, 
and was reactivated to a throng of 14,000 at the Igloo. His welcome home game did very well at the gate. one nothing, East on top. Live on ESPN, we get the five-minute mark. Time remaining, period one. Lobo Ilyevsky, keeper for the East, distributes it out. Tattoo has it back. Walks in on Bellinger. Christensen, the West captain for Tattoo. Bumped off the ball by Bellinger. Here's Terlecki. The East has a counterattack. Terlecki with Craig Allen of the force playing in the box. Terlecki continues on his way, taken down, and now the whistle with the late whistle. And the West called for the foul. Very tough tackle by Dudek, Chef. Well, they're starting to get into the game, and there's no way, no way you can let Stan Terlecki have so much time on the ball. Goal by Kitson while we were in the replay. Paul Kitson with an incredible goal off the volley. His second of the game. And the East leads it 2 nothing. Tremendous shot by Kitson into the upper corner. Those high shots uh, really have are now becoming the perfection of these indoor players that can get them up high. And of course, the release is so fast that keepers uh, rarely get a chance to get the reaction in, even though the goal is small. Well, the players have adapted during the early years of the MISL, the first few years, goalkeepers were worried about the shots low. And now you're absolutely right, Seamus, the goals percentage-wise are being scored up high above the waist. And Paul Kitson with a thunderous shot to the upper part of the net. Makes it 2-0 for the East. Bruce Savage picks up the assist at 10-31. Kitson's fourth career All-Star goal and second of the game, and the East leads it 2-0. Dudek for Las Vegas. A little bit behind Rundbet and right to Stavankovic. Well, the East behind Paul Kitchen has the advantage. Stavankovic, the magician, steps right past Rundbet. Couldn't get past Woolrich. Gee, Cheesy wins the ball, and Semenkovic commits the foul. And the magician has 30 goals so far during the regular season, his fourth year in the league. Eric Rasmussen has Ralph Black to his left. Rasmussen right down the middle with a goal, and the West gets on the board. Slobo might have been looking for the pass, and the shot beat him to the far post. Well. I think you'll see Steve Jungle here doing a very good decoy run, if you can call that indoors. Maybe we won't see it, but he's off to the left. A lot of players reacted that way, then reacted late to the right. And there is Jungle. See, that was the man drawing all the attention. Absolutely right. Uh, there's no doubt that Slobo had his eye on Steve Jungle coasting to the left of the net. Slobo, uh, a little bit of lack of concentration, and that's the ever-present threat of a Steve Jungle lurking around the goal. Rasmussen unassisted at 11-10, so the West closes it down, and the East lead now 2-1. Goosen's fighting in the corner, number 11 for the East. Won by the West, and Rasmussen now. With Bellinger, who puts it over. It'll be a kick-in. The East does have five team fouls called against it so far in this period. Should they be whistled for another one in the remaining three and a half minutes, they would be hit with a two-minute bench penalty. And we would see the power play, very much a factor of indoor soccer, the two-minute penalty stolen away. And Rasmussen just puts it right back to Mike Mahoney. So the West behind Rasmussen's goal his first ever all-star goal. McCallis for Sagota in the corner. Bronco against Jan Goosens. McCallis moves out of his way. Bronco tries to play it to himself. Slobo goes down and Ilyevsky has it and a push called against the West. Their fourth of the period. Well, Sagota taking on Ballinger. I think Ballinger, one of the toughest guys in the league to take on, Chef. That's a good effort and a good idea by Bronco. Uh, it didn't come off, but it, it shows that he's out there to try and do it by himself if nothing else. Stankovic against V. Stankovic plays to Karim, and Kitson's got a hat trick in the first period. Paul Kitson tips it in, his third goal in 12 minutes and 11 seconds in a 3 1 East lead. Well, Gus Bocalis again victimized a little bit. I think surprised to see that ball come across, but this is kind of a goalkeeper's nightmare, is it not, Chef? That ball, that ball along the boards. Well, Tough to tell from that angle how close it was to Mike Mahoney, but it is a nightmare. He must face the shot coming from the corner, rebounding off the wall. That's a Baltimore blast connection. Stankovic to Paul Kitson, and Kitson in a perfect position to stick that ball in the back of the net. 
So Paul Kitson, who was named as a replacement for Jerry Gray, picks up the goal. Ilieski puts it over. That must be the fastest hat trick in indoor soccer Emma, in uh, West, uh, I mean, all star soccer history, surely. Stagovic gets the assist, 12 11 the time, and Kitson's young son, two year old son, Paulie Jr., on hand watching this game. MVP of this game drives off in a brand new automobile. Kitson takes it out of the air and gives it right to Slobo Ilievsky doing the job defensively. He's cut the very large leg up now on that MVP award. He's back on the ball. Paul Kitson with Allen of Cleveland. Out comes Mahoney, and it caroms to Sagota. Two minutes, 20 seconds, first period. Kitson comes back defensively. Bronco Sagota Kitson gets a foot in there. Sagota still out of jungle in the box. Jungle and a goal! And just like that. Well, I talked about positioning beforehand. Jungle initially was deep in the penalty area, close to the goal. When he saw the carom to the corner, he withdrew to the top of the box, and that's where the goal came from. And again, the importance of knowing each other. Again, two teammates, Branco Segoda and Steve Jungle, hooking up for the goal. An intuitive sense of where Steve Jungle would be standing. Steve finds himself a great position, puts it the only place he can. Slobo really has not much of a chance on that goal. Jungle from Sagoda at 12.46, and so the East lead is now 3-2. Craig Allen for Bruce Savage, the East and the Red on the attack. Allen of Cleveland for Turlecki, the target man. Dan Kanner makes his first appearance. That shot is wide. Julie V on the ball. And Jurgen Christensen now for the West tries to clear his own end. Allen keeps it alive. Well, that ties an all-star record. The hat trick by Kitson. Most goals in a corner as Ilyevsky punches it away from Kevin Crow, who is called for jumping in on the keeper. And the 15th foul of the quarter now for the West. Good decision by Slobo there, not to risk putting his hands up when it was so perilously close to the area. And a good illustration of Shep's point early on that you have to be a good field player to be a keeper in this league. Craig Allen of Cleveland works in on Crow, three on one, lays it back for Escovi now. Terlecki against Tattoo. Stan Terlecki, a minute 19 of the period. Tattoo tries to win it and does so, but Terlecki got the last foot in there, and Stankovic takes it away from Julie V at midfield. It's getting rough. We've had five goals in the first 12 minutes. And at this stage of the game, really, if there's no blood, there's no foul, and the referee's doing an excellent <laughs> job, but they're letting the guys get into the game. Well, the next foul shot means we'll have a time penalty. Well, it's Either just, way. just been introduced into the league this year, and I think it's a very vec very effective tool of eliminating unnecessary rough play. Mikowski wins it back, moves in, lays it to Tattoo, loose in the area. Mikowski blocked by Stankovic, back to Christensen. Christensen deflected wide by Savage. 39 seconds in the period. The East leads it 3-2, the West on the attack. Julie V. Back to Greg Mikowski. Off the glass and headed out. V's got it back, Mikowski. Christensen and Terlecki wins it with 24 seconds in the period. Kim Runfed saved the one on none opportunity from Terlecki. 15 seconds in the period, Greg Mikowski. Christensen for Tattoo, who turns and has it blocked by Savage with five seconds. Runfed. Wide, put out by Savage with two seconds, and that's it for period number one. And on the strength of the Paul Kitson hat trick for the East, the Eastern Conference leading the West by the count of 3 2. We'll be back to take a look at period number one from Richfield, Ohio, after this. Listen to these stuffy noses. Afra doesn't have it. Dristan doesn't have it. Only Sinex has it. Ooh. That quick feeling of relief from instantly penetrating Vicks vapors, plus a powerful decongestant that opens nasal passages and allows you to breathe freely. Ah, complete relief. For hours and hours, Sinex gives you both instant relief Ooh. and complete relief. Ah. Sinex in regular and extra strength. From Vicks, of course. Well, among the hat tricks that have been put away this year, Carl Heinz Granitza has the most. You don't see Paul Kitson among the league leaders in hat tricks. He does have 22 goals this year, but the hat trick, the three goal effort, same term they use in ice hockey. And Kitson's hat trick has the East on top by the count of 3 2. And Shep, his first goal came at 454. Stamenkovic got the assist. And it's a give and go. Paul Kitson gave the first pass to Stamenkovic. Then he got himself into a great position at the far post. Mike Mahoney, no chance. And Ralph Black 
a little bit late on it. His second goal, Seamus, a beautiful attempt out of midair, the full volley. Tremendous finishing effort. I, I think yeah, this uh, is Rasmussen actually, this coming is Rasmussen's down. goal, yes, as everybody withdraws to the left, worrying about jungle. Keeper reacting a bit to his left and not really getting down fast enough, which is so crucial indoors because uh, the ball just comes in over those short distances so quickly. Roy Turner and Ron Newman, the West Division coaches. Uh, Ron, the assistant coach for this game, the head coach on the right-hand side, the head coach of San Diego, and Roy Turner in his sixth year coaching the Wichita Wings. And he has the longest tenure of any coach in the MISL, spent 10 years as an outdoor player. And so his team is down by a goal. They have watched Paul Kitson of Baltimore dent the twines three times. We'll continue between periods after this word. You know, the business world moves fast. I found only one publication keeps pace with it every business day. Only this, the Wall Street Journal. Not weekly, not bi-weekly, today's business news today. So you can use it today. Get the next six months of the Wall Street Journal delivered for just $56, only 44 cents a day. To order phone 800-372-3000. That's six months over 125 issues for just $56. Phone 800-372-3000 today. Well, if you are to believe those numbers, and we must because they are official, uh, the West has had the better of it at peppering shots at Slobo Ilyevsky, the St. Louis keeper, but 3-2 are the numbers that really count, Shamus. Well, of course, the one thing about uh, the shot statistics in the indoor game that is particularly worth remembering is that a lot of shots get blocked. Uh, and the uh, measure of a good defense is not necessarily the number of saves a keeper has, but in many ways the number of shots that are blocked by the guys out front. So not many shots getting through to the East goalkeeper. Um, on the other hand, it is surprising that, uh, or I mean, to the West goalkeeper, it's surprising that, that only four were credited and three goals were scored. By the way, at the end of the 83-84 game, first quarter, uh, it was East four, West two, and that was the most goals ever scored in the first quarter, a total of six, and this uh, five that we have seen in this period uh, is the second most number of goals scored in an all-star game first period. Timo Lukowski on the left, the assistant East coach, and there's Kenny Cooper, the Baltimore head coach. Roy Turner, his opposite number of the Wichita Wings and very impressive numbers. Roy also uh, one time a player for the U.S. national team, naturalized American citizen. We're set to go period two as we reverse directions in Terlecki for the East from the Pittsburgh's Derek Stan on his left foot, taken off the ball by Mikowski and a free kick for the East in a very dangerous position. Five goals in that first period, three of them by Paul Kitson. Terlecki to Danny Cantor, deflected off the glass. Tony Bellinger, number six, Cantor, number three, now a member of the Chicago Sting. And Gus Mokalis of the LA Lasers has it. The West in the blue, the East in the red. Eric Rasmussen. Mokalis, he's got Tattoo playing in the area with Batata out front. Batata taken down by Bellinger and foul whistle on Tony. E. Davis, well known to all fans, even casual fans of the sport. Mikowski save in front as Slobo Ilyevsky went down and Terlecki now to Bellinger. Just underway in the second period, live on ESPN. Davis to Cantor. They were mates on the Cosmos at one time. And they played with Stan Terlecki there, who's on the ball. Davis lifts it. Whistle in the corner and a foul on the East. For the push, Paul Child of Pittsburgh called for that foul. Second foul of this period already for the East, and we've played only a minute and a half. Rasmussen, Ilyeski heads it out, and Child is on it, watched by Gene Wilrich of San Diego. Gives it away to Rasmussen, but he overran the ball. The East leads it 3-2, along with Shep Messing and Seamus Mallon. i Bob Lee, ESPN live from the Richfield Coliseum tonight. Davis with a shot, punched out by Mike. Mahoney. And now Kevin Crow to his mate Gene Wilrich. Those two play together with San Diego. Wilrich now to Jungle, who's also on the soccer squad. Watched by Savage of Baltimore. This is Sagoda, another soccer's player. San Diego owns this ship, except for Helmut Dudek on defense. Keith Furphy of Cleveland starts to clear his own end. 
Just under 13 minutes in this first half. Gene Wilrich moves it on Savage. Karam is loose. Kitson puts it wide. And here comes the East. Look at these players getting back on defense. We saw at one time Stamankovic and Kitson coming all the way back. Now they're up at the opposite end of the field looking for a shot. Stamankovic wide. Perhaps looking for Kitson to redirect it and Jungle's on it. But also using Kevin Crow nicely as a screen. And a lot of the good shooters will do that if a defender is lined up in front of him. They're skillful enough to play the ball just past their feet. And of course, the goalkeeper is screened by that kind of shot. That's a difficult situation. The versatility of these players makes it so much more dangerous for the goalkeeper. Slobo has used his head on three or four occasions right at the edge of the penalty box. Perhaps unsure of just where he is, he takes the safe route by heading it out. The danger they face is that much greater. It's an all-star game. They're facing the best in the sport. Mike Stankovic of Baltimore. Play on. Gets around Segoda. Right on. Mahoney dropped it. And the rebound, though, to Segoda. Stopped by Stankovic. Tries to lead Furphy. Stopped by Dudek and cleaned out by Segoda. Tattoo at midfield. The West looks to build the attack. They are down by a goal. Live on ESPN, the MISL All-Star game. Jurgen Christensen against Stankovic. He takes it. Paul Trowell didn't expect it. Right to Julie V. A little giveaway. Kitson watches defensively. Christensen. Julie V ties the game. And for Julie V, his second career All-Star game, playing in his third game. Well, that's what indoor soccer is all about. That play comes right out of the coach's manual. It's what uh, makes this game go. And it's just the absolute basic ingredient of the game, Shep. And here's the decision Slobo has to make. And he, he makes perhaps a difficult one. He went down, tried to clear the pass with his feet. Once that pass got by, by him off the boards, there was no chance into an empty net. The great advantage of those boards, of course, uh, it's the nightmare of the goalkeepers, the, the shot that's passed to the post, which goalkeepers have been brought up to forget about. You can't forget about them indoors because they end up coming right in front of the kitchen there, and all of a sudden you're in trouble, as uh, Ilyevsky was that time. We're tied at three. Christensen assists Julie Vey at 3.31, and so we are three and three. Early second period. Batata. Runfeld gives it right back to Mahoney. We're looking forward to Wednesday here on ESPN, the Titanic matchup, number one and number two, Georgetown and St. John's Wednesday evening. Live college baseball a little bit later on Sunday evening, right after this game. Runfeld, Christensen, and now Ralph Black as the West builds the attack. Kim Runfeld for Tattoo. Cantor has him defensively. And a goal by Tattoo. Well, all the great scorers we've talked about have the ability to turn on their defender. And there, there he goes, folks, into his act. No, not quite. <laughs> I guess they don't have that extra supply of all-star shirts. But uh, we were told he brought some extras. Apparently, that's not the case. <laughs> and Seamus, I think that's a well-deserved goal. Tattoo has been really working hard down low. Watch this spin to the left. Almost no room to work. He tracks it with his left foot. Slow ball caught, a bit flat-footed, and it's a goal in the back of the net. Runfed with the assist tattoo scores at 4.17, so the West leads now for the first time. Wednesday, ESPN brings you only the best. It all starts when the NFL's all-time all-star quarterbacks step into the spotlight. Then the rematch you've been waiting for. St. John's and Georgetown battle for the nation's number one spot in the biggest game of the season, live. More basketball follows. Georgia Tech looks to stay atop the ACC standings with a win over North Carolina. It's another super shootout. Meet the winners Wednesday. So goals by Julie V. And moments ago, Tattoo of the Dallas Sidekicks giving the West a 4-3 advantage in this All-Star Classic. Runfed gets the assist again, the time 4-17. The West back on the attack, Kim Runfed. Crisscrossing with Gene Wilrich. Jungle in the box, stepped over that ball. this game of changing complexities and the unexpected and changing fortunes. We've seen it. Paul Kitson has the hat trick, but his team is trailing. Two team fouls on the east in this quarter, one on the west. Teams making changes. This is Tony Bellinger of the St. Louis Spirits. Stankovic of Baltimore. Furphy past him. 
And Jungle in his own end starts to build the attack. Run back. Tony Bellinger. And Ralph Black just wide rather, and Wilrich is on the rebound. Now the West will take their time. Very unusual to see Steve Jungle taking almost a sweeper's position, Sheamus. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he's being marked so tightly up front that he wants to find and create some space for himself, and he does that by withdrawing. 9.20 in this first half, and the West has the lead. Everybody has made changes. They've got new lineups out there. We're set to go. They've made the changes on the fly. Wilrich. Watched by Stankovic, and will push in the corner. Free kick for the West. That's the 13th foul in this quarter on the East. Gene Wilrich naturalized just before the Olympic Games as a U.S. citizen. In the net. I think that's an own goal. Uh, well, no such thing as an own goal, I guess, anymore. Somebody gets credit for it, but it went in off a defender, I think. It looked like Mike Stankovic. He was taking a, uh, his good position at the front post. We'll look again and see if we can pick it up. Corner kick was taken quickly and turned across the goal mouth. Don't think we could see it on that angle, but yes, it was Mike Stankovic, and he's turning, trying to clear the ball. Uh, a nightmare for Slobo, nothing he could do about it. Well, we will pick up the official scoring in just a second. It came at 5.53 of period two. The West leads it by a deuce. Daiwa introduces the most advanced bait casting wheel ever to surface. Graphite Magforce with AutoCast. The lightweight reel that helped Larry Nixon win the Bassmasters Classic with Daiwa's new AutoCast Control that lets you cast one-handed and cover the water faster. Plus a 5.36 to 1 retrieve that's the fastest in fishing. Get Daiwa's new Magforce with AutoCast and get a jump on the fish. They have given the goal to Rasmussen. Well, you're very welcome. The exciting indoor soccer all-star game, the MISL action here on ESPN. Our pleasure to be here in Richfield, Ohio, in front of a full house. 5-3, the West leading, and a look at this year, what the scoring race looks like. Renitza, Carl Heinz of Chicago, bowed out of this game with a slight case of the flu, but jungle with 45. Julie V, Tattoo, Sagoda. We've got most of the top scorers in action tonight. We've had eight goals so far. We're not yet halfway through the second period. Stangovic of Baltimore. Guy Heskovay of the Cleveland Force. Watched by Tattoo defensively. Murphy in front, deflected. Stangovic lines it up, a bullet deflected out by Tattoo, a kick in for the East. <laughs> Tattoo saying to Stangovic, hey man, take it easy. Stangovic, of course, a defender, maybe in name only, is certainly the most aggressive defender uh, in, on the Baltimore side, and maybe one of the most in the league. He scored a lot of goals as a, a as a overlapping uh, attacker and uh, has a tremendous shot. Allen couldn't control it. It came to Tattoo. The West tries to clear. Hescovy keeps it alive, and now Makowski back to Mike Mahoney. Eight and a half minutes till halftime here on ESPN. Jeff Messing, Seamus Mallon, Bob Lee, live in Richfield, Ohio. Bronco Sakota on the ball. Well, the West fell behind early, but they have rallied here in the second period as Stankovic takes down Tattoo, and that is the fourth foul this quarter on the East. When you hit six, we'll have the power play. And Stankovic, uh, just an unbelievable player, and he feels worse than anybody in the stadium about that own goal. Certainly not his fault, but he's out there cracking people, trying to make up for it. Slobo Ilieski, the St. Louis Steamers. Sagoda on now. I may be wrong, but I don't recall seeing Sagoda out very much in this game so far, Shep. Well, he hasn't. He's taken the odd shift. He, he combined with Steve Jungle for one goal, but he really hasn't been on in a regular shift. In the West, I guess, trying to find an alignment, with, uh, a style and a rhythm that suits the game. Greg Mikowski. And Savage distributes to Craig Allen, and the East looks to build the attack. The East trailing by two goals. Keith Murphy, 26-year-old member of the Cleveland Force. Ty Huskaby back to Bruce Savage of Baltimore. Takes on Tattoo, plays it for himself off the boards. Tattoo is there. Tattoo only did bring one jersey for the West. He has that one goal so far. Craig Allen of Cleveland, crisscrossing with Murphy. Allen deflected by Mo Callis. Huskaby out to Stankovic. Now Tony Bellinger of the Steamers. 
Kitson steps on now for the East. Already with the hat trick. His bullet just wide. The rebound can't be controlled. Sagota can't get it. And Craig Allen's got it. Seven minutes first half. The East threatening here. Stankovic winds it up on his left foot. Now right to Sagota. Three on one developing. What speed by Bronco. Just wide. Well, Kellis on the rebound put wide. End-to-end -end action, a great save by Slobo off Franco, and here goes the East the other way. Keith Murphy in front. The rebound saved by Mahoney. He never saw it. The header is still loose. Stamankovic fighting for it, and finally Batata controls, and now Dudek. Wild end-to-end -end action, six and a half minutes first half. And now Christensen will just circle the wagons for a second. The West will make some lineup changes on the fly. The West leading it 5-3. Christensen, the West captain, sees he's got everybody on and he's set to go. Jungle, watched by Franz Matthew. Morgan Christensen. Helmut Dudek has a bullet of the left foot. Bellinger wins that ball well, and here comes the East, the magician, Stan Stanakovic. Jungle harasses him just a bit defensively. It's the very top of the class and goes out. 5.42 to go. Well, we've seen some good defense so far in this game, Seamus. Well, here's a, a shot we're going to see coming up from Stamankovic, I think, because the ball comes back right to him, and he's going to come up here with one of those drives of his. And it is well parried away, seen late a little bit, but seen nonetheless by Mahoney, who has impressed me in some games. I've seen him by his ability to save the ball with his feet. There you see the score. The West coming from behind. They were down 3-1, and they've now got up 5-3. Bronco Sagoda named to this team yep. as a late we'll, replacement. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about exactly why that all happened when we get a moment. It's very hard to get a, a moment, and frankly, in this sport. It's uh, so much end-to-end -end action, and this has been a, a really a sparkling game. All kinds of, of uh, action, and of course, seven goals. I mean, eight goals already. Well, we have about five minutes till halftime. Shep is making his way down the field level. We hope to talk to uh, one of the outstanding stars of the first half. Just after the buzzer, Gene Wilrich tries to cross it. The West maintains the advantage. Only one team foul against the West in this quarter. And four against the East. And if you've just joined us and are new to the MISL, the experimental rule this year when you hit six, the bench penalty is assessed six fouls in any given quarter. Matthew gets in front of Jungle, pokes Jungle in the eye as well, and the East has the attack going. Stamenkovic, crisscrossing with Goosens. He's got Kitson in the box. Right through to Mahoney. Kitson let it go. And stolen back by the Magician. Stamenkovic fans on it, taken down from behind by Christensen, and he gets a two-minute penalty. And now we'll see the power play. Well, we were waiting for a power play situation. It didn't come until 4.23 of the second period, indication of the kind of talent that's out there. They don't need to foul, but you see very obviously a foul coming up as Tomenkovic made the very good steal initially off Jorgen Christensen, and then Jorgen Christensen just simply chops him down from behind, and the referee uh, decides that that's, that one is just too much. Gino DiPolito, the ref, over the ball there, and we'll see a power play situation, and it uh, be interesting to see if they put as many players from one team as they can out there because power plays of course require some practice there's not been a lot of practice for these clubs and let's see who they've got out there as Stamenkovic and Furphy and Terlecki and Craig Allen and Hoskaby that's the power play unit the man advantage unit for the East 10 37 the time of the penalty to Christensen the call is tripping so the East with the man advantage and as in hockey if the East scores the penalty ends Terlecki locked down and Slobo Ilyevsky of the Steamers comes all the way across the red line to give to his mates. Three uh, Cleveland players, three Cleveland Force players on the east to power play. Stamankovic lifts it. Escovy deflects it out. It'll be a kick in now for a goal kick for the West. Mike Mahoney, 18 victories so far this season. As rugged as you'll find in the keeping department. It takes a lot to knock him out of action. He's played 30 games so far this year. Kim Rundvedt for the West. The West trying to kill this penalty. He's on the fence. Rundvedt along with Kevin Crow as Mahoney comes off his line, but it comes down to Terlecki. Furphy for Stamankovic on the East power play. Furphy, go! That's what they came to see in Cleveland. 
A power play goal by Keith Murphy. Well, a final piece of combination work out there with Stamenkovic and Furphy. And Furphy, you see there, getting the congratulations of his teammates. But he laid the ball off nicely, got it back. The defense sags over to the left. Christian uh, Stamenkovic wisely holds the ball, draws a player, then places it into the open space, and then between the legs of a defender, the defender number four for the West there, Greg Makowski. And of course, really very little ch ch uh, chance for Mahoney as the ball comes through a crowd. Uh, just uh, the shots from close in with these talented players are virtually unstoppable. And so the East is back within one. They trail 5 4. Well, a perfect illustration of X's and O's and the power play. And Furphy from Stamankovic at 11 14 as Ilyevsky corrals it with tattoo in front. So it's now a West lead of 5 to 4 live on ESPN. 29 goals on the regular season for Keith Murphy. That's his second career All-Star goal. This is the third time he's been in the Classic. He's been taking 210 shots on this season. That's getting up there in the shooting department. And I'm sure he's uh, made somebody else in his family very proud. His dad, of course, Ken, a uh, well-known soccer figure. I think he's back in England now, is yes, he Yes, he is. Coached for a while over here. Rasmussen back to Julie V. The West in the blue on the attack. They have the one goal lead. Tattoo as Savage gives him some trouble. Back to Rasmussen, who already has one goal today. Eric turns it on Goosens, who got a piece of it. Two minutes, 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Tattoo, who also has a goal. Runtvet, right to Slobo Ilyevsky of St. Louis. We should be seeing Scott Manning in the nets for Baltimore in the second half for the East. And Zoltan Toth of San Diego will be in goal for the West in the second half. Paul Child loses out to Ralph Black, and the West has it back. A little bit of dangerous play there by Stan Terlecki. Went the other way, actually, against Black, so it'll be a free kick for... No, they did call it the other way. Terlecki tried to steal the free kick. So what else is new? Two minutes remaining in this first half. A staccato delivery of goals in the first period. And then the West got the better of it in the early moments of the second period. Julie V and then Tattoo and Rasmussen. Gusmo Callis now the lasers on the ball deflected by Savage. Under two minutes, first half. Savage for Paul Child of Pittsburgh. Wide, the rebound to V with Ricky Davis in front. Now Bronco Segoda, three on one on the counterattack now for the West. Saved by Ilyevsky. With the right palm. Great drive by Sagoda. He's got such power and speed. He used Tattoo at the far post of the decoy to get his shot off. Stankovic just deflected by Mahoney with the foot, I believe. 90 seconds in the first half. And the push against the East. Tremendous end-to-end -end action. Just what we had hoped would happen. We've seen nine goals. It's a terrific uh, advertisement here for the game. And that is... Foul number six against the East, so a team penalty will be whistled now. A bench penalty against I'm the East and a power play once again. This time for the West, our officials, Gino DiPolito and Jeff Mantell, are the field officials and the assistant referee, Marty Templin. As you look at Jeff Mantell. And so the West now will have the mad advantage. Last time the East had it, the only time we've had it in this game, it resulted in the Keith Murphy power play goal. And drew the East to within one. So now the decision has to be made. Uh, who will serve the penalty for the Eastern Conference? Well, the first period, the shots were very much in, heavily in favor of the West, and they trailed 3-2 at the end of the first period. They then surged ahead, uh, scoring three straight goals to lead 5-3, so they seem to have dominated the second period. But once again, these statistics in the indoor game uh, cause all kinds of uh, tricks to you because the shots this quarter are nine apiece. The East has rallied well. They put it uh, down to 5-4, but now they've got to uh, kill a power play situation, which, as you say, may run over into the second period. By the way, Slobo Ilyevsky uh, is in danger of breaking a Shep Messing record, which, uh, I think a record that Shep would ha be happy to have broken, <laughs> frankly. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that is the most goals conceded in a period. Uh, they both have conceded five, along with that legendary all-star Sepp Gantenhammer, who I'm afraid uh, goes into the record book um, along with the amazing Armadillo. Uh, but in any case, 
Sh uh, Sh Shep Messing, uh, I think, would be uh, not too happy to shed that particular record. But Ilyevsky, I think, a uh, little at fault in a couple of goals, but just too much talent out there on the offensive side to start blaming goalkeepers at this stage. 124 in the first half. Stankovic will serve the bench penalty against the East, and this penalty could very well run over into the third period, into the second half. The West leads it 5-4, and now they've got the power play. Shep Messing down below. He'll be chatting with one of the stars of the first half of action. Right at the first half uh, buzzer. Tattoo to Bronco Sigoto. They've got that San Diego power play unit out there. Four members of the Sockers in helmet Dudek. Sigoto with that ever dangerous left foot. Wilrich, the distributor, excellent assist man. Tattoo is out there, and Sigoto is wide over to Dudek. 53 seconds in this period. And Wilrich will have to regroup. This is Sagoda moving in on Bellinger and Kitson. Gene Wilrich. Sagoda blocked by Tony Bellinger, and now Kitson's got it. And the East, down a man, has the man at deficit as Bellinger is challenged, and Mahoney comes off his line, but right to Paul Kitson. Back comes the East. Kitson tries to lift it. Not a bad technique. With 20 seconds remaining in this first half and 56 seconds remaining on the bench penalty. Well, Kitson doing a good job on the power play situation. That is the man down situation. You like to have a quick guy on that team for the fast break and the counter attack, attack opportunity to get a shorthanded goal if possible, and he's the man for that. The West again, the offensive zone. Wilrich well over the top with exactly 10 seconds now remaining in the first half. So, for all intents and purposes, this will be carried over into the second half. Slobo Ilievsky. 35-year-old keeper, his fifth year in the league. Third time he's played in the All-Star game. And this is the sixth annual Major Indoor Soccer League All-Star Classic. And we have reached halftime of the Classic. And the West coming from behind, despite the Paul Kitson hat-trick. For the East, the West leads it at the half by the count of five goals to four. And yes, we've seen some defense as advertised, but we've seen some offense. Well, initially the defense is dominated, which is no surprise. Uh, Kitson got a surprise goal at the five-minute mark or just under it. But really, the defenses were doing so well early, and that is sort of to be expected uh, in an all-star game. But really, uh, eventually, the offensive talent is so much out there, is so great, that defenders uh, really are, are uh, backpedaling a lot of the time and are, uh, dare I say, it, somewhat on the defensive, and eventually the goal started to come. Well, the offensive hero of the first half, Paul Kitchen of Baltimore, who had the hat trick in the first 12 11 of this game, and he's standing by with Shep Messing. Shep? Paul Kitson, tell me about your own performance. You scored three goals in the first quarter to tie an all-star record. Give me your thoughts about the first half in general, your own performance in particular. Well, basically, we've got away from our game plan, which was to try to hold them to, to four goals, which is a little bit impossible, Like, but that's what we set out there to do. We started off really well by hitting the early goals, but Kenny seemed to have thought we got caught into a running game, a transition game, whereas, you know, we'll go forward and score as many, they'll go forward and score as many. The players that they have, like Steve and Bronco Segoda, it's it's almost impossible to actually play a game like that. As you, as you may as well as know as I do, you know, the best form of offense is defense, and we have to work from the back first before we go forward. Right. What about your own performance, Paul? You looked super in the first quarter. There were opportunistic goals, but you're pumped up. I've seen you play. You've stuck three in the back of the net. What do you think? Give us your thoughts for the second half. Well, my thoughts for the second half is basically to go out there on overall on a team performance like and to try and win this thing. You know, if I score three goals or six goals, it doesn't make that much of a difference. To me personally, like the, the main important thing is to win the game. Super effort. Good luck in the second half. Thank you very Paul. much, Sheffield. I'd just like to say hi to the fans back home in Baltimore and my fans back home in Jersey. Thank Thanks, you. Paul. Bob? Okay, Chef, there are plenty of fans watching in Baltimore. As we said, the Blast players are donating their proceeds from this game to charity. Right now, Paul's team is down by a goal. Paul's got the hat trick. The West has the lead. We're at halftime. We'll be back to the Coliseum in just a moment.